Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be looking into this paper which is Dense Cross Retrieval. What retrieval granularity should we use? This is from researchers from University of Washington, Tencent AI Lab, University of Pennsylvania and Carnegie Mellon University. I mean the title is really verbose to understand what this paper is really about right so for those who didn't get it i mean you're trying to use dense retrievers for the retrieval task but the question that you're trying to answer is what should be your chunk size or how do you come up with the chunk size that's really appropriate because the choice will significantly impact your retrieval and response generation performance so in this paper what they propose is is a novel retrieval unit which they call as propositions and the paper specifically says that if you use propositions as your retrieval units or chunk units, and if you're doing dense retrieval, which is based on embeddings and some sort of similarity measure to calculate the closeness, they significantly outperform traditional passage or sentence based methods. And that too for both retrieval and question answering. So yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess, right? Because choosing a right chunk size, whether that should be passage, sentence, or at token level, that's really all the developers that are into building question answering systems or generally are in the GNI or LLM space and are working on RAG face issue with. So if propositions as your retrieval unit works well which is what they're claiming in the results then i guess that makes our life much much better cool so let's see to what a proposition exactly is so they have a example where they're showcasing a question answering system and they're trying to retrieve the relevant chunk that might have the answer for the given question so passage we understand right i mean you'll have multiple sentences and the job of dense retriever is to get you the most similar passages that might have this answer so if this is one of the passages that we return then this is where the answer exactly lies with sentence this is just one sentence you need to get to a single sentence that may contain your answer and this is the answer that it holds whereas with proposition these are even smaller segments compared to sentences those exactly contain what an answer is which is 3.99 so you see right as we go from top to bottom the confusion for the downstream LA model to get or extract your answer is reducing significantly because now it need not deal with other numbers that it was seeing in passage or probably in sentences for that matter. So that way your LLM is getting less load on computing the exact answer and the chances of it now hallucinating becomes less. And if you're sending smaller sentences, you can stuff in more chunks for the model to figure out the answer within the same context window that it can handle. So that's also a plus point. Okay. So what the C is like for two retrievers for the task of passage retrieval and question answering, consistently the proposition units are better compared to using passages or sentences. And this is happening on Wikipedia text. Yeah. Cool. So let's move forward and see what this exactly is. Okay, so they have one more figure where they, yeah, so I think with this we'll get more idea. So if this was the passage, then these are three propositions that can be extracted from the single passage, which look like different sentences, but are not really because it's doing a lot of other stuff. For example, if you see this, right, the tower now leans at about this much degrees, this gets break down into 0.2 where they it says like the leaning tower pisa now leans at this so it has kind of done a co-reference resolution for the word the tower to the leaning tower of pisa so now if you see the sentence in isolation it's complete right i mean there's no extra information that you need to get to what degrees for what tower are we really talking about but rather if you would have broken down at punctuation and if this was your chunk which is the tower now leans at 3.99 degrees it's really hard for the model to when it sees this in isolation to say okay the, the tower that we're talking about here is about the leaning tower of pisa so those are extra nitty-gritties that the propositions are handling and making each of its unit complete by themselves okay let's first delve into what a proposition is i mean they should have some definition okay yeah so here we have a set of rules that define what exactly qualifies as a proposition so the first principle says that each proposition should correspond to a distinct piece of meaning in the text where the composition of all propositions would represent the semantics of the entire text okay so what it means is like let's say you have paragraph and you extract distinct pieces of text which is let's say this one this one and this one individually each of them 
represent different meanings but collectively all of them represent what was mentioned in this paragraph so that is the first requirement for a unit to be called as proposition the second is it should be minimal it cannot be further split into separate propositions okay which means it's self-contained i mean there's no scope of you breaking it down further into multiple sub propositions and finally the proposition should be contextualized and self-contained the proposition should include all the necessary context from the text such as co-reference to interpret its meaning so that's the same example that we saw right i mean the tower was referenced back as the leaning tower of pisa so that was the co-referencing piece so if all these three conditions are met what you see is a proposition so now the question is like how are we even creating these proposition given a passage as an input so for that they train a model in twofold so they call their system as proportionizer which takes passages and input and generate lists of propositions within the passages and output so you have like two step distillation process the first is like you prompt gpt4 with an instruction containing proposition definition which is all these three rules that we saw over here right and maybe a few short examples of a passage and what are set of propositions that are possible get extracted from it and you create your data set using this process and they did it for roughly 42000 passages to get a seed data set of paragraph to proposition pairs then they essentially fine tune a much smaller language model which is flan t5 large on this data set and now this is readily available for you to convert any passage into proposition okay so yeah, that was how the system was created. They experimented for question answering and retrieval for all the numbers that they have put in is across all the retrievers that they tried out, which is CMCSE, Contriever, DPR. I'm not sure what these are, but yeah. Okay, let's jump onto the table of results. So yeah, this is the retrieval performance for passages. So you have all the retrievers. You have three kinds of granularity. You have five data sets and two metrics that we are tracking. So some of these retrievers are unsupervised, some are supervised, but consistently, if you see the average for both recall five and 20, proposition is surpassing both passage and sentence as the unit blocks. So yeah, that's, so yeah, that's pretty consistent. Also, this table shows document retriever recall versus the popularity of any targeted entity. So a popularity of an entity is how they calculate it is based on 1000 passages that they retrieve using BM25 and what's the count of the entity that is being asked in the question based on that they calculate how popular that entity is so if the entity that we are asking question about is not so popular then the difference between the performance for passage sentence and proposition as a retrieval unit is really big whereas as we go from left to right in each of these sub figures you will see the margin getting closer i mean the difference is getting smaller and smaller which means for the cases wherein we are trying to ask question for the entity that's really popular across in our data set more or less everybody is going to give the similar performance regardless of whatever retrieval unit you select regardless of whatever retrieval unit you choose but if the entity is not so popular then propositions perform way better so in general across popularity proposition is something that you should consider over sentences and passage okay so this is a similar thing for question answering similar looking evaluation and the results are consistent for proposition averaged across all the data sets so yeah that's pretty good actually cool so i think we are done with the paper let me see if they have open source their code and if i can do any implementation and share it across with you guys that would be awesome right cool in the meantime make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel also do share it across with the friends to whosoever you think might be interested in this content i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care